Hey guys, it's Alana and welcome back for another episode of Seeing Other People. So I want to call out that one thing I really appreciate about the Seeing Other People family, aka you listening to this, is that I feel like you guys are really excited about the episodes that challenge you and that make you think and that make you really look within and and figure out what could you be doing better or what could you be maybe like working a little harder at when it comes to yourself in dating and how you interact with others in dating. And this episode is definitely one along those lines. And it's one that I'm, I'm so excited to share because it really made me think and made me think about conversations that I've had in the past where I could have done it differently and where I could have maybe been more empathetic and compassionate to the person I was having a conversation with. And obviously life is about communicating with others and having relationships, whether it's a romantic relationship or a friendship or a relationship, like a partnership or a a coworker ship, anything like that. And I think that everything we're going to talk about in this episode can really relate to any type of relationship, any type of conversation you're having in life where you really want to express yourself or encourage somebody else to express themselves in a, in a really comfortable way. So, um, to help me with this conversation and by help me, I mean like lead it and teach us everything is the wonderful David Savage. He is an empath. He really knows how to help foster healthy communication and authentic communication and how to figure out like what's within us that we can learn more about and understand more about so that we can then have better relationships, better life experiences and all that. He'll give a much better introduction to himself. But without further ado, let's bring him in. And we are in the episode. Hey, everyone, we are here with the one and only David Sauvage, which is a really cool last name. Um, David, thank you so much for being here. Why don't you introduce yourself to the Seeing Other People family? Well, it's fun to be here. Uh, I love talking about relationships, relationship dynamics. Um, My superpower is feeling into what is happening in myself and putting words to it and feeling into what is happening within others and putting words to it. And I've been playing with this superpower in different formats. Uh, Pre-pandemic, I was doing a lot of performance art where I would sit in front of audiences, feel people's feelings, and share what I thought they were feeling. And in the last year and a half, I've been focused mostly on teaching. So I teach emotional intelligence, healthy communication, and the like. Um, And so I'm happy to be here and share what I got. Amazing. Well, I'm really excited to have you here. And I think that is so cool. Even just the way you describe that, like the first part of your superpower is being able to actually figure out and feel what you're feeling and put words to it. Cause that's something that, first of all, I think a lot of people don't know how to figure out like what they're really feeling, but I think the majority of us struggle with articulating that to ourselves and to others. So I think that's really cool that you're able to do that within yourself and of course, within others as well. Um, now I'm a little nervous about everything we talked about briefly before, cause now I'm wondering what you think that I'm feeling. <laughs> well, you seem to feel like mostly, uh, curious, mildly nervous, uh, a little bit excited, uh, and like in a light, joyful place, that's, uh, your, your, your sweet spot. Okay. I'll take it. That, that all sounds pretty accurate. Um, well, I'm super excited to have you here. And I know what we're going to get into is a lot of different things about communication and communicating how we're feeling and being open and honest about those feelings when it comes to dating and relationships. And, um, one specific topic that I think is going to be super interesting to learn about and to share with all of you, which is how to get men to talk about their feelings. I know that's something that a lot of, a lot of women struggle with, um, in a heterosexual relationship and, you know, to any of the guys listening, like you might struggle with it too. You might know that you struggle with it. And if not, 
give it a chance. Listen, you probably definitely absolutely will learn something. Um, so David, let's start off with healthy and like authentic, real communication. And I think the first place to start would be like, what are some examples of healthy versus unhealthy communication in terms of like dating and relationships? Probably goes beyond dating and relationships, but certainly includes them. Mm -hmm. I think about healthy communication as expressing honestly and authentically what is going on inside you in such a way that the other person can understand. So there's two pieces to it. The first is getting clear on what's actually happening within you. And the second is finding a way to explain it to somebody else that takes into account their psychology too. Uh, unhealthy communication, an example of this would be, why don't you take your stupid socks off the floor, you jerk? That would be unhealthy communication. Uh, it's unhealthy because um, it's not taking any responsibility for the experience you're having when you're... Um, confronted with socks on the floor. It's taking all of that anger and turning it into blame and judgment. And therefore it doesn't take any account of the other person's experience of what you're saying. And not only is it unhealthy, it's also very ineffective um, mm -hmm. usually. So a healthy way of doing that would be to say something like, hey, um, when you leave your socks on the floor, I feel really frustrated and angry. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you could pick your socks up off the floor because it's hard for me. Mm -hmm. And maybe the person can't do it. Maybe the person responds with, well, that's just, you know, that's just, that's just like, I can't, I can't. And then unhealthy communication response, that would be, yes, you can get over yourself. Healthy communication would be something like, Ooh, I hear that's really hard for you. It's really hard for me too. We obviously have a problem here. Let's try to feel into a solution that works for both of us. So healthy communication is basically engaging for real with what's going on inside yourself, engaging for real with what's going on inside the other. And over time, these this way of communicating will establish a more authentic connection. You know, the it's really interesting because as you're saying this and as I'm listening, it's really reminding me of only one person in my life who I feel actually communicates this way. And that's my brother, Andrew. And Andrew, for everyone, if you listened to the episode a few weeks back, Confessions of Next Fuckboy, that's Andrew. And <laughs> coincidentally, Andrew is how I got connected to David. So I really do like in every example you just gave, like, I think Andrew's the only person I know that actually communicates that way, like in almost every single situation. And I do think it allows people to be more open and honest and communicate in that healthy way back, which is really interesting and something that you might not necessarily realize, like when you do communicate in that way, you, that's almost like what you'll receive back because you're inviting the person to respond in a similar manner. So yeah. I just, thought that was really interesting. And I, I also want to acknowledge, um, you're saying that, you know, you only know one person, your brother, who's a friend of mine, uh, who does this regularly. And I want to acknowledge how hard this is that, you know, what I just did there may have sounded easy, but that's only because I have years and years of feeling into my feelings and learning how to express them. And mm -hmm. most of us don't. And so most of us are going to say things like, why can't you pick up your stupid socks? And I want to say that saying, why can't you pick up your stupid, stupid socks is healthier than seeing socks on the floor day after day, feeling resentful and not saying anything. So maybe we can start by the first step along the path of healthy communication is actually communicating your feelings in some way. Mm -hmm. And then from there, maybe taking responsibility for what are your feelings and what are you saying about your feelings? And then maybe from there, taking some, uh, some responsibility for the way the person experiences what you're saying. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a journey and not one that we can, you know, just hear me say all this and go tomorrow, I'm going to be a perfectly healthy communicator. Uh, you're not, it's going to be a process. 
in terms of that process and and getting there step by step along that journey, are there any different things you would suggest in terms of like catching yourself communicating in that unhealthy way? Like how, cause like sometimes I feel like we, we just go through our day, we go through our lives. We don't stop to think about what we're saying. And I think recognizing that is always like the first step in trying to change that. So if you are someone who is communicating in an unhealthy way time and time again, like how can you kind of recognize that? Well, the first step, step zero is, to forgive yourself as much as you can. Um, a place where a lot of people get stuck is when they hear that they should be doing something better, they tell themselves something's wrong with me. It feeds into a lot of blame and shame internally. It validates their darkest thoughts about themselves and they fall into hopelessness. So we can skip all that ideally by just saying, if you communicate in quote unquote unhealthy ways, it's because that's how you were taught. And these unhealthy ways of communicating were actually the best way that you could get your needs met. Otherwise, you wouldn't have learned how to communicate that way. They were almost certainly the way you needed to communicate to get your needs met within your family. And now that you're hearing me, or now that you're like, hmm, I want to do a better job of this, I would say step one is when you're feeling something, See if you can take a beat to understand what it is you're actually feeling. So maybe a better way of saying that is when you're communicating from feelings, take a beat to get in touch with the feelings. So if you see the socks on the floor and uh, anger rises up in you, see if you can spend a beat with that anger. Ooh, I'm feeling angry before you even say a thing. Getting in touch with your own feelings is the perfect first step in healthy communication. And then the second one is see if you can communicate what you're feeling um, as cleanly as possible, meaning use feeling words. I feel X, Y, and Z. I feel angry. I feel sad. I feel confused. I feel frustrated. Mm -hmm. Those sentences are so, 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 so healthy. Um, you probably won't, most of us won't be able to match the word to the feeling very well at first. And that's okay. It can be an exploration. It's perfectly healthy to say, I'm feeling things. I don't even know what they are. I'm feeling, is it confused? Is it frustrated? I don't know. You're doing great. Uh, if you're doing that, it takes time to align your words with your feelings. That those, that's where to start. I like that answer. And I really like the part you brought up about if you're communicating in a certain way, it's probably because that's what you needed to do growing up to get your needs met. And I think that ties really well into the whole concept of like relationship role models. And a lot of us didn't grow up with relationship role models that are really could, would be considered role models. Like people, I feel like more often than not, most of my friends, their parents had like messy marriages and messy divorces. And so to them, they've never really experienced what a healthy marriage or a healthy partnership and healthy communication looks like. And so I think that definitely makes the process of finding a partner now so much more difficult, especially when let like, let's say you communicate in very different ways. So one question I have for you is if somebody, let's say I am somebody who is a really healthy communicator in terms of everything we've gone over. And I, and starting like a partnership with somebody who says like, why can't you pick up the stupid socks on the floor? You, you jerk. Like how can, can it work? You know, like can that partnership work? And if not, like how would you suggest I bring it up to this partner? Like, Hey, like what would I say? Or what kind of can I do to, to help mend that? those differences and say like the way you're communicating to me isn't, isn't helping me. It's hurting. It's something like that. You know, um, it can work. It can work. It really depends on what the person's underlying intention is mm -hmm. when they talk like that. So in some families, aggressive communication, even outright mean spirited communication is just a form of communication. It doesn't have much substance underneath it. Mm -hmm. And so that person might be communicating that way out of habit. And the task in front of you is to get them to see how that habit hurts you, which might not be that hard 
if they don't feel the feelings that are underneath that habit. But if there's a lot of rage or contempt underneath those words that is animating those words, if, for instance, really deep down inside, they want you to feel really badly, right. then you're going to have a deep, you have a deeper problem than communication. And no amount of learning how to communicate better is going to resolve um, malignant narcissism or even worse, uh, or sadism or something like that, or, or just a complete um, disconnection from your experience. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on what's going on inside the person. And you can't know what's going on inside the person based on what they're saying or how they're communicating. That's what we want to change. What people are saying is a vague clue to what's happening inside them. And we have no idea. So it brings up two approaches. The first is what you did, what you modeled pretty well right there, which is like, hey, when you say X, Y, and Z to me, uh, what happens with me is that I feel really constricted and disconnected from you and a little scared. Um, I would like you to change the way you express your displeasure with my sloppiness, please. And you might find that the person is really responsive to that. Ooh, I didn't even know that. Like, I didn't even know that that was having that effect on you. Thank you for telling me. And if he's really, really self-aware, he'll say, it's going to take me a while to change my communication patterns because they're really deep in there. But I feel what you want and I'm going to make an effort. And please let me know when I slip into it. And now you're on the same team working together toward a resolution that feels good to both parties. And that's wonderful. However, he might not respond that way in this hypothetical. He might say, what the hell is your problem? Get over yourself. And now you have a deeper, a deeper issue because this person might be carrying the belief that your feelings don't matter when they have strong emotions. And this is a deep belief that a lot of people have that they don't realize it, where it's like, okay, I'm having this intense emotion and that means that you don't matter and you don't matter and you don't matter. And unprogramming that deep belief is really, really, really hard. One of the best ways to really find love and find your person is to actually focus on being your best self and your happiest self. And in doing that, you naturally attract people towards you. And if you don't take the time to actually say like, all right, I am going to prioritize me, I am going to focus on me, then that's probably not going to happen because life gets in the way. My favorite way to focus on whatever I need to focus on is with the help of Mindset Wellness CBD's CBD Focus Gummies. They are amazing. They taste great. They're organic, non-GMO, and I have a discount code for you. So head to mindsetwellness.com and use code seeing other people at checkout for a 10% off discount and free shipping. Yeah, it's it's so interesting. Everything you say, I feel it, it really does extend beyond just relationships and dating. And of course, that's like what we're mainly going to talk about here. But I feel like more often than not, this happens in friendships. And I can even think about some friendships where it's like we go about our friendships year over year and there will always be certain things that somebody might do or say or, or an action that might not align with you and and what you feel and what you want. And I feel like we kind of let those slide under the rug a lot. But I think I think the moral of the story here is like, if you want to have a, a stronger, healthier, better relationship, wh whatever type of relationship it is, if not holding back and, and doing that action to communicate how it's making you feel, I think is like the best thing you can do for yourself and for the success of whatever friendship, partnership, relationship. With with one, one or two notable caveats, which is that for some people, expressing what is going on inside themselves um, when it might meet resistance in another person is going to be overwhelmingly stressful. Yes, like the, it's not the, easy. <laughs> the conflict avoidance might be so intense that actually to try to do it could literally cause like a meltdown or a nervous breakdown or an anxiety attack. Yeah. And so if that's, if that's your case, I don't want you trying really, really hard to express what you're feeling to another. 
I want you to look at that pattern in yourself. What is it in you that is causing you to shut down or flip out at merely the thought of bringing up the way somebody has hurt you honestly? Yeah. That's the work to do if you're incapable of, of bridging the gap. And in that situation, I feel like a lot of times that happens because of a past experience or in, in a certain, in one case it could happen because of a past experience. And what if somebody's like been through something where the last time they did try and bring up how someone's communication or something they were doing was making them feel. And it, it went terribly. Like I can imagine that if I'm sitting here and I'm feeling like I'm going to break down at the thought of saying to someone like, Hey, the way this thing or that thing or that thing is hurting me or whatnot, like, can we work through this? Like, let's say the last time I did that, it led to a breakup. You know, how can, how can someone really get past that? Or is it possible to get past that? Or what is the best thing to do in that mm -hmm. situation? Like you mentioned, where you are feeling so stressed at the thought of it. Well, it depends on the particulars here. In the case of somebody like you just described, who in the past was honest and it led to something overwhelmingly painful, and now they're having all this intense fear come up around it in a current relationship, you're going to need some support for bringing, bringing it out. That support could come in the form of a friend, like, hey, can we plan this conversation? Can I role play this? Mm -hmm. um, in, in psychological terms, we would call that emotion exposure. Let me see if I can feel some of the discomfort I'm about to feel up front so that when I bring it up to this person, I'll be more ready for it. Another thing you could do is practice expressing what you're feeling around issues that are relatively trivial or, trivial or minor. So, hey, I'm a little scared to bring this up, but the food you made today I so appreciated all the love you put into it, but the salt was a little too much for me. And I'm really scared to tell you that because I really appreciated that you cooked for me. Mm -hmm. And that conversation is probably manageable, even for the most conflict avoidant person. And it will help build the muscles of healthy communication. And then depending on the relationship that you're in, uh, you might rope in for support the very person you're trying to communicate with. If you say to them, hey, I have something I need to bring up to you about something that didn't, doesn't feel good, but I also want to tell you that it's really, 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 really hard for me to bring that up. Yeah. And I want you to be as patient and understanding with me as possible as I share. Can you make some time and space for that? Um, that depending on where they're at, and how willing they are to be helpful to you, that might be the thing. If the conflict avoidance runs deeper, meaning like it's terrifying for you to tell anyone ever that you're having an issue with them, um, the work is going to take a while and you're going to need to get some support around it. And often the place to start we can just do it right now, is to remember something most of us have been taught to forget, and that that is that our feelings matter. Our needs matter. It's not only and always about other people. And that's something that most of us were taught backward about. Most of us were taught that our needs don't matter, that our feelings come secondary, that we should take care of other people before ourselves. Uh, women get this message more than men or girls get this message more than boys, but boys get it too. And we need to unlearn that. Yeah, that's a really, really, really good point that you brought up. And I can even in conversations that I have with listeners, it's like, it's like that situation where 95% of a relationship or like something that could be going on with someone. And I've been in this situation to myself where it's like, it's not good. It's not healthy. It's clearly not okay. You're not happy, but that 5% or like those times where you help them, where it's like people kind of, instead of trying to find partners, they find projects. Cause it's like, Oh, but like I can make this person better. And it's like, well, you're not making yourself better, you're not feeling good. Um, and I think that's something that it's easier to prioritize other people before ourselves because we feel like we're being selfish when we're putting ourselves first. Um, I think one good thing that the pandemic kind of allowed us to realize is that like our 
our sanity, like our mental health does matter. And I think I've noticed amongst my friendships and, and people I work with where like, if we're having a bad day or if we're exhausted, like, and want to cancel plans or need to cancel a meeting, like people have been way more understanding. And so I think that carries through in a lot of different ways, like beyond just in relationships, which is cool. Um, one thing I want to kind of get into and, and the salt concept made me think of this is how honest is too honest. And let's say it's about like, like, let's say that person cooked a meal for me and I like hated it, but like, am I gonna eat it anyway? And just like give some feedback on the salt or, I mean, the real example that I was thinking of is like, if somebody tells you how they feel about you and you don't feel the same or after a date that doesn't go well, like how do you walk the line between being honest and versus like hurting someone's feelings? I'm thinking, I guess my question to you is what's your intention in this relationship where I don't go and where I think your question is inviting me, but where I don't really go, um, not out of fear, but just because I don't feel it's helpful is Mm -hmm. morality. Uh, I don't feel like there's a right answer in terms of good and bad, right and wrong. So orienting around those concepts doesn't help us. Mm -hmm. What helps me is to orient around what feels true and authentic for myself and my own needs and what feels true and authentic for the other and their needs. And first I need to integrate myself and my own needs. And then once I have sufficiently, I can integrate them and their needs. Mm -hmm. Uh, Usually when people are saying you're being too honest, maybe what's going on is that you're not taking into account the emotional experience of the person you're talking to. And so if you just say in the salt example, um, or in the after a date example, and you say, well, um, something harsh, but true, like your accent was unbearable to me and I could never date anyone with that accent. Uh, let's say that that's true. It's, it's a perfectly reasonable reason to not be with someone if you can't stand their voice. Okay. Well, saying that probably just makes them feel really bad. Yeah. They can't change it <laughs> and they can't change it. And so is that, who is, who is that serving? Is that serving you? Is that serving them? I feel like it's serving nobody. Um, but maybe what you could say is, um, there are, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling like there's compatibility here. Just as true, Mm -hmm. but you're not delivering information that is just hurtful and pointless. Um, but let's say the person's really curious and they're like, it would really help me to know what's, what the nature of the incompatibility is. Well, if you're really, really, really astute, and I mean really astute, you'll be able to discern whether they're asking from a place of truly wanting to grow and understand themselves or whether they're asking from a place of wanting to feel bad about themselves and punish themselves. And if you sense that they're truly wanting to grow and they're able to hold whatever the truth is, then you might say, I'm embarrassed to say this. And I really hope that this doesn't cause you further pain, but I am, I have a particular sensitivity around accents and I feel like your accent is incompatible with my ears. And I'm so (laughs) embarrassed to tell you that. Yeah. Uh, if you feel like that really serves that person, then go for it. But if it feels like you're just hurting them for no reason, then that's not very nice. And it doesn't serve you either. Like you, that's your, you're just going to feel worse yourself. Yeah. I, I really like that example and the way you explained that, because I do see people sending like thoughtful, like anti-ghosting rejection texts where it's like, I had a great time, but I, I don't feel a connection. And And most of the time people will say like, appreciate the honesty, but sometimes people will ask like, can I ask what I did wrong? Or can I ask what wasn't, didn't feel right for you? And I think that question really catches people off guard and they never know what to say. And so I really like that concept of like considering where their curiosity is coming from and if, if what you're going to say is going to help them or hurt them. So I think that's definitely really good advice. 
And I also want to make a distinction between authenticity and transparency. I'm a big fan of authenticity, but transparency is something to be discerning about. And there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't feel comfortable sharing what it is that is causing this feeling in me. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is honest and real and good and healthy. And that is, a, that is an expression of a boundary many of us need to set. Just because yeah. somebody's asking for information does not mean they're entitled to it. Absolutely. That's a really good point. All right. I have a few listener questions on this topic before we move on to the getting men to talk about their feelings. Um, the first one, it says, let's say I'm an open book and the person I'm going on dates with seems pretty closed off, but I'm super into him and I want to have it progress. How can I make sure that my openness isn't too much for them? And how can I encourage them to be more open and honest with me? Mm, the question um, is a hard one for me, not because it's so complex, but because the premise of it is um, is not one that I want to encourage. So the premise of the question is, I want it to progress, therefore I want to hide the part of me that uh, I'm afraid might be too much for them so that it progresses, which means inevitably that that openness that you think might throw them off will come back later. And now they will be doubly thrown off first by your openness and then by the fact that you hid it from them. Um, and this to, to, to segue into our next, um, our next topic, which we don't have to go to directly, but this is one of the key reasons that men have trouble opening up on our side of things is that women often have a tendency to, for lack of a better word, it's a harsh one, but manipulate. And so the desire to get a man to see you as something other than you are so that he likes you more because you want the relationship to progress is a recipe for an unhealthy relationship. And as you go down that path of misleading someone as to who you are in order to get them to like you, I hope at some point, if the relationship is solid enough and meaningful enough that you'll unwind that and acknowledge that you did that so that you can heal from that misdirection. So I would say to this um, kind person asking, uh, consider being more open. Consider saying something like, I like you and I'm really insecure about my openness. Mm -hmm. And now you are really opening the door for an authentic and healthy relationship. And you're giving the man the information about who you are that then he can use to determine on his own authentically whether you're a match. Is this somebody I want to be with? Now I have more information about her. And that's really, really good. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I, what you said at first about not like don't hide your openness from someone because that's going to come back later. Like that is such a good thing. Thing for people to remember, like I know so many times my friends and, and people who write in and email me are saying like, I feel like I need to just play it cool so that like they're into me. And I'm like, no, like, you have no. to be yourself. You have to be yourself. That's the only way that it is going to work because eventually they're going to find out who you are and you're not going to be compatible if they've been dating this seemingly other person the whole time until yeah. you finally show your true colors. Yeah, I want to. I think that's mostly true. With one little, really terrible exception, is I want to acknowledge that there are people out there who hide parts of themselves for their entire lives. That's true. And so there are there are people out there who are so who want a relationship so badly that they will suppress an aspect or aspects of themselves forever. Yeah. And um, please don't do that. Don't do that for yourself. Don't do that to another person. It's so um, unkind to do that to another person because you are not giving them the information they need to make mature decisions about what they want. You are gaslighting them into an alternate version of who you are so that you get what you want. Stop it. <laughs> Yes, I could not agree more. And it's also if if you want to be in a relationship so badly that you're going to change or hide something about yourself, like realize that that's not going to be a relationship that fulfills you either. And it's also almost not fair to the person on the other end of it. And if you really want to find a relationship, I think you really want to find a relationship that makes you happy and that makes you feel whole and that makes you yeah. a better person. And that's 
it, it's not always going to mm-hmm. happen as quickly and as seamlessly and as easily as you want it to. But waiting yeah. out, I think, is really like the strongest thing you can do. And and there's one other thing you can do on top of waiting it out, which is get curious about what in you believes that being your true and authentic self means you won't get the relationship you desire. That is coming from a very deep wound, almost in, almost invariably in childhood, that you have learned, unfortunately, that being who you really are means you won't get what you need. And you are replaying that story in your adulthood. So the journey is not to try to manipulate somebody into getting what you need. The journey is to look at that pattern in yourself and work to heal it. Yeah, absolutely. The next question I have is from a 28 year old male. He said, I'm super quiet. It's pretty much the opposite of the one we were having before. Um, the question we had before I'm super quiet and reserved and it takes me a while to open up, but the girl I'm going out with is super open about her feelings. How can I respectfully slow her down or give or ask her to give me a chance to catch up? Both of those are great. You can say, I, I would literally tell this wonderful uh, question asker, ask her the exact same question you just <laughs> asked us. Yeah. Hey, this is how I'm feeling about how you're sharing your feelings. Uh, can you slow down for me? Or can you give me a chance to catch up? Like bring her into what's going on in you. Absolutely. And and I'm sure that, that she'll respect that and she'll take that as you being open too, which it's it a win-win. And, it, yeah. and if she doesn't respect it, let's say she's like, you know, I, I don't have patience for that. You need to speed, you need to catch up to me. It's great that you know that sooner rather than later. The great thing about being authentic while you're dating is that compatibility shows itself sooner and incompatibility shows itself sooner. So if you can get clear on what your needs are and express them openly and the person can't meet them, wonderful. You've learned what you needed to learn really quick. Yep. Get out. Get out fast before you get deeper in and it hurts more later. For sure. All right. My next question brings us right into the the juiciest topic of this podcast episode. Um, it is a short but sweet one. I have no idea where his head is at, and we've been going out for a few months now. How can I figure out what he's thinking? <laughs> well, first of all, ask. But um, I think a lot of the things we've gone over are very good ways to find out what he's thinking. But um, yeah, I think the, the moral of this one is is going back to what we were going to bring up is how do we get guys to talk about their feelings, especially when we don't know where they're at, they're not being expressive. Really, the question is, how do we do it? Please enlighten us, David. (laughs) Well, why don't you follow all of their friends on Instagram and then find out where they are 24 seven and then see if you can glean from all the social media information, what they might be thinking and feeling. Pay special attention to their exes. Pay even more attention to how many minutes after you post an Instagram story, are they checking it? And if they're active, but not responding to your text, like that's the most important thing to pay attention to, obviously. Obviously. And and the best, the, the, the best thing you can do to understand what they're truly thinking is to get their phone password. (laughs) (laughs) Very healthy. We love that. We, we highly recommend that for a healthy, stable partnership. (laughs) So these are some strategies. Uh, Well, I like what you said to, uh, to your question asker there, which is, it sounds like she really wants to know how he's feeling about her. Yeah. And she really doesn't want to ask him. And so I would suggest that she say something to him like, Hey, I really want to know how you're feeling about me but I'm really scared to ask you. Yeah. And he might say, oh, I really like you in a way that she doesn't believe or feel. He might just say whatever it takes to get her to go away because he's not enjoying being asked about his feelings. To which her response could be something like, "Uh, I hear that you say you really like me, but when you say that, it doesn't calm me down because I don't feel you feeling that. I'm just not sure. And I think this gets to the most important thing. Well, maybe not the most important thing, but the first thing that's coming up about what women can do to help men express their feelings 
is to express their own feelings honestly and openly and vulnerably. So if you want him to say what he's thinking, what, I don't think she means thinking, I'm sure she means feeling, what maybe what she could do is say, this is how I'm feeling. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it's so, I mean, obviously it's so important to, to, find out and be on the same page because I think what happens more often than not is we make assumptions like the number of times people tell me like they think they're exclusive with someone or they think they're like get, heading towards a relationship and then they find out the other person's completely not thinking that like and I've been through that so many times and and everyone listening like you guys know how much hell it's put me through and how much pain I've gotten myself into because of it um and I think yeah I think it's really not it's just say like, Hey, I really enjoy hanging out with you and I'm definitely developing feelings for you and see this going somewhere. That's how I'm feeling. I'm just curious, like where your head is at. It doesn't have to be this, like, so are you going to fall in love with me? Are we going to date? Like, where is this going? It doesn't have to be a serious conversation. Yeah. But then I want to take into account the many, it's not just women who fall into this, but we're talking to women right now, I guess, but the many women who really are having those super anxious fears. Yeah. So they're not just curious. They might be obsessive. They might be scared out of their minds. They might be waking up every day desperate for a text message and afraid to communicate how desperate they are for that text message. And so the, the thing to do there, as challenging, as excruciating as it might be, but the way forward is to start communicating openly about that. Yeah. If you have a lot of anxiety around what the person is feeling, your job, as difficult as it is, is to start owning that and expressing that. And so saying something like, hey, um, I spend a lot of time trying to understand what you're feeling, trying to reassure myself that you like me, talking to my friends about what you might be thinking you would make my life so much easier and I would be so much calmer if you would tell me what you're feeling and what you're thinking. Can yeah. you do that for me? That would be amazing if you can find the courage to do that. And it's definitely not easy. And and I really like what how you brought up like that feeling of like waking up and, and needing that text or like feeling so, so anxious over not getting that text, not hearing from them, not having that like little bit of what you need to feel reassured. And I, I have a feeling a lot of people listening have felt that way and know exactly what you're talking about. And it, to anyone listening who hasn't felt that way, you might be like, wow, well, this person, whoever's doing this and, and feeling this sounds crazy. Like it's, it's, it's really real. And I've felt that so many times and it's truly one of the worst feelings in the world. Um, and so always consider that the person on the other end, especially if it's a new relationship or you've been on a few dates, like you don't know what they've been through and you don't know how it's whatever they've been through has impacted them. So it really is, I think, more common than you may think if you've never been through it for somebody to really like feel this debilitating anxiety over not getting a text back or not knowing when the next plan is going to happen. And like, I've, I've like been anxious to tears over this stuff or like not eating for days because I just didn't know if I was going to see a guy for a third date, you know, and it sucks. Um, so, and I really think that like most people would be receptive to what you just explained, David, like saying like, Hey, like, this is how this is making me feel. Like it would be really helpful to me if you could do this, it would make me feel a lot better. And I think that if, if somebody is going to be right for you, then they would be willing to do that. And it goes back to what we brought up before, where like, if they resist that, or if they're not willing, like, then, you know, sooner. Yeah. Or at the very least, if, if they're, if they struggle to do that, at least they can express that they struggle to do that. Yes. So maybe they can say, Hey, I get that you want me to text you every day. That's really hard for me. Mm -hmm. So and now we're why. at least... And here's why. And now and we're it doesn't in a dialogue. mean I like you any less or exactly. I'm not thinking of you. I'm super busy with work, things like that. Or my it's or I feel I'll talk for myself. Like when I'm in a when I'm in a relationship and there are needs for regular communication, I get I personally end up feeling drained. And it's not a sign of my lack of interest in them. Mm -hmm. Um it's just uh it 
taps into this wound in me of like, you got to let your mother know how you're doing. And I become, it's, it, it loses the romantic flavor and starts to take on a chore. And then the, the, the spark goes away, not because the spark isn't there, but just because it falls into the category of like, oh, and that's, that's wounds on my end that might interact in painful ways with wounds on a woman's end. And mm -hmm. it doesn't mean we're fundamentally incompatible, but it means we do need to be an open and honest dialogue about this tension. Yeah. And my, the feeling I'm having about being drained by needing to communicate regularly is real and needs to be honored and seen. And the feeling she's having about needing regular communication is real and needs to be honored. And so in a healthy relationship, we're seeing both of each other's needs and trying to find the sweet spot. Absolutely. Why is it that maybe men more than women are a little more reserved with communicating about their feelings? I mean, even for me, uh, in the past relationships I've been in or past like situationships or dating experiences, it's, it's always been me like being, being upfront about it or, or not really getting anything from the guy or like having to wait for that text the day after a date. Um, up until my current relationship where literally 20 minutes after the date, I got a text saying I had a really great time and would love to see you again. And I think that's literally why I'm with my boyfriend because after every date, he texted me right after to tell me how he was feeling. And I was like, what is this? Like, where did this guy come from? Um, but yeah. Why, why is that? I guess is my question. Yeah. Well, I would say for the most part, women get the short end of the stick in this world. You, we are in a deeply patriarchal world and it is harder on the whole to be a woman than a man. But there are some exceptions, and there was definitely an area where men got the short end of the stick, and that we were taught in a way women weren't taught as badly, that our emotions didn't matter, and that we need to toughen up, and that feelings were for sissies. And the way we internalized or integrated that is by disconnecting from our emotions, um, what, when, when we learn, and I was, I learned it too, when we as boys learn that we need to be tough, the way a child understands that is that they need to be numb. <laughs> there's no way to be tough, but there's a way to be numb. And so you, you're like, oh, I'm having these feelings. I shove them down. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so now when women are saying, well, I want, I want you to express what you're feeling, you're encountering layers and layers and layers of multi-generational masculine trauma. Good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> it's not what I signed up for. <laughs> it is on some level. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, but like how, how can we help. I know we, we've talked about a few different things that we can say and do, but I guess just like day to day or like when on a date, whether it's like a first or second or third date, or when it comes to like having an exclusive talker or just like talking about feelings, like what are a few things that women can do, um, to kind of really just get men to talk about their feelings other than like first just saying, this is how I'm feeling. What about you? All right, you guys, we are well into cuffing season now. Technically, it might still be tryouts, but it's really time. People are over hot vac summer, shot girl summer, and people are ready to settle down. They're ready to find someone to keep them warm. And whether you are looking for somebody just for the winter that could turn into a year round type of thing, or if you're really looking for the one, now is the time. Now is when people are trying to get into relationships and you don't want to miss this opportunity. So it is time to focus on dating, focus on updating your dating app profile, putting together your pre-date playlist and getting out there on dates. My favorite way to focus is by taking a CBD focus gummy from Mindset Wellness CBD. You guys have to check them out, mindsetwellness.com. And of course, use code seeing other people at checkout for a discount. Yeah, um, this is how I'm feeling is really good. Another thing you can do is be clear about how much it would mean to you for the person to express their feelings. So this is how I'm feeling. I would really love it if you shared with me how you're feeling. 
then the next thing you can do, which is very, very, very hard, is to try your best to hold all of their feelings with compassion and understanding, even if what they're feeling is not what you want them to be feeling. The reason why it's so hard for us to be in and express our feelings is because what feelings we were originally having back in the day when we were connected to them were not acceptable to the people around us. And so we disconnected. So as you're asking us to come back into our feelings, you have to, and I, 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 I feel guilty burdening women with more uh, responsibility for holding men. Um, it, it shouldn't have to be this way, but unfortunately in this kind of dating dynamic it often does have to be this way uh, you have to make an extra special effort to be as compassionate and understanding toward whatever feelings they happen to be feeling so if you're like how are you really feeling and the guy says i'm really feeling annoyed and if your next response is well why the hell do you feel annoyed what's wrong with you you have now taught them that they should not share what they are feeling Whereas if they say, I'm feeling annoyed, and you're like, thank you for sharing what you're feeling, it is hard for me to hear that you're annoyed about me, but it is really, I'm really grateful that you are able to express what you're feeling, and I want to encourage you to share more of what you're feeling, even when it's hard for me to hear it, then you're retraining us in the right way. Yeah. I like the, the word retraining. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. I mean... I think that's really good advice. And I think that's something that, again, like it's something that we're scared to do, but if we're able to do it and, and if that conversation is hard to bring up, I think that piece you gave about like practicing, I forget what was it called? Emotional emotion, exposure, exposure emotion, exposure. Yes. I think that's a really great way to do it and to, to get yourself to bring up that question that you're afraid to ask. Um, and if you're not able to do it, yeah, like you said before, I think about why, but I think that was really, really good. And it's not your fault that we have to do the things that we have to do as women. So don't be hard on yourself for that. <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I guess I'm not hard on myself. Um, there's some guilt in there that transcends my own personal experience of like, asking a man asking women to hold men's experiences when mm -hmm. men on the whole have done such a horrible job holding women's experiences yeah. feels unfortunate um but there's it does seem to be necessary in these kinds of dynamics some there's something else coming up for me around this which is that the question of how to get a man to express his feelings has um, a subtly manipulative tone to it. Like there's something you need to do to get. And a better way of looking at it is how can I make this man feel so safe that he naturally expresses his feelings? We want as human beings to connect and one essential way that we connect is by sharing our feelings. Maybe not in words, but we need to share our feelings and we need our feelings to be seen and understood in order to be in healthy relationships, in healthy friendships, in healthy families, in healthy communities. And so there's a deep urge to do it. And all we need to do is make spaces safe enough and that urge will triumph and feelings will be shared. Yeah. Without a doubt. That was beautifully said. And with that, David, thank you so much for being here. Where can the Seeing Other People family find you and more of what you do? You can find me on my website, uh, www.empath.nyc. Uh, you sign up for my mailing list if you like. I teach regular classes free of charge on Zoom, which you can join anytime. You can follow me on Instagram at EmpathNYC. Uh, and if you happen to be on Clubhouse, I do lots of regular stuff there that your brother sometimes joins. Um, yes, he, he spoke very highly of your Clubhouse talks. So, so, and that's just, uh, you can search for my name, David Sauvage, or my handle, Empath, on Clubhouse. Amazing. And I will link and tag everything in the show notes and on Instagram. Um, thank you again, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to give a five-star rating, a glowing review, 
follow David, definitely sign up for one of his Zoom classes. That sounds amazing. Um, And as always, stay tuned for the next episode of Seeing Other People. Thank you.